we're just playing guess the population of Australia. Uh, I, um, I'm gonna go hundred million. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> any other guesses? Man, I don't know. I feel like it's a big country, but I feel like it's very dis- disparate. Like not a whole lot of people, but I could be completely. I'm gonna say. 30 million what's the u.s population even yeah i'm gonna guess 50 million yeah u.s is 300 so yeah u.s is 300 and christian you're pretty pretty close i think it's okay. somewhere between 25 and 30 million all right nice yeah nice one um yeah so i set up a patreon account oh i haven't checked it since you made it oh terrible <laughs> yeah i know i put so much work <laughs> into that <laughs> well i checked it but not since you made it like so i checked it once but i didn't check to see if uh, anyone else had uh joined it actually you know i don't think i've checked it since i made it either i was kind of waiting until <laughs> until <laughs> today um this is probably going to be part of the show so i'll just say quickly that um yeah i've made a patreon account um i don't really Oh, I don't really want to put any ads on the podcast at any point. I'm not even sure if the podcast will get to the point where we'd want to put ads on there. Well, they're saying that you don't really have to wait for an advertiser to approach you. You can just go out and start selling um, or start talking about Audible links um, just straight off the bat if you wanted to. Huh. Um, but yeah, I don't really like ads in podcasts, so I've made a Patreon account and to start with any funds that we get i'm the only patron so far so um, we're making a massive three dollars a show um, but any funds we'll get <laughs> will go into promoting the podcast um and any costs that might come up with it will oh. also go into it um, the only cost at the moment would be hosting it but i was paying that anyway just for for um a hosting server so it's not like it's costing any extra but if um if there is a decent following at some point it will cost to host it are we like charged uh, yeah. per download or how does that work hosting wise i pay a set amount per month and i think it's maybe 10 or 100 gig of traffic i don't even know oh, wow. really 10 sounds too small doesn't it it must be 100 gig of traffic that's not bad yeah it's not too bad but i would say this month already actually no last month last month we probably did close to 10 gig on podcast episodes wow that's pretty good yeah nice uh, just a little bit of follow-up from the other show we did. I said that I will try and edit it on a plane, and it actually worked out really well. I just edited the whole show on my phone with an app called Ferrite, oh which I don't know if you guys have heard of. <laughs> uh-uh. Was no. it annoying? No, I think it actually took the same amount of time as doing it in Logic, although I didn't quite spend as much time uh, cutting out the ums and ahs, which I sometimes do. So there were a few more of those in there. But, yeah, I think it took around two hours which yeah it's the same as it takes in logic i thought it sounded great coming from someone who wasn't part of it it sounded good yeah oh that's good to hear so so yeah fair right it's um really good on ipad which i'd used before i'd never used it before on an iphone and it's just as good Hmm. does it cost money assuming it does right yeah i paid to unlock the pro features of which i did use a few of them um Back when I was trying to make the iPad my computer, I paid for those. Mm-hmm. I think it was maybe 30 Australian in-app purchase, which is probably 45 or so American dollars. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it's not cheap, but it's a great app if you do need to edit multi-track audio. Maybe not for music, but it's definitely targeted at podcasters. Okay. I'll have to check it out. It sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Support our Patreon page so you can get paid back for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right i think that's all the follow-up should we jump into the hottest topic actually no it wasn't the hottest topic i think i just scrubbed the hottest topic i can't even remember what it was but the top the second top post on r slash apple for the last two weeks was fix it apple when my iMessages receive out of order you know what the most annoying thing about ios is which is (laughs) i like this post because there are tons of posts about messages being out of order but i don't think anyone except i enjoy lemonade actually made an interesting title which is probably why it's at the top now so this isn't really an issue that i've encountered very much like maybe once or twice i'll get a a message out of order but so i don't know have david or james have you ever experienced this yeah it's a couple times but it's not like make or break and it's not that crazy either it's like if i'm texting somebody you know back and forth it might go out of order but it's not like i send a message and then five minutes later i go back and look and there's like three messages that i didn't receive that were ahead of mine or i mean it's not it's not that big of a deal it's happened a couple times but it's nothing nothing crazy 
I actually didn't even read this post because I thought this guy was just drunk, so I didn't even go in and look that he actually was just trying to, to make a pun out of it. I'm like, dude, this guy's an idiot. Like, what? Is, I don't even see what he's trying to say here. So, yeah, great job. But if that's what's happening to you, that yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, if you go through the comments, it seems like the world's biggest problem. I do have the problem very occasionally, maybe once or twice a week. Um, and it, I do send quite a few iMessages, so it's definitely not a huge problem. But the weird thing that I found is it didn't actually start happening to me until Apple said this is fixed, which, um, if you remember, I think 10.2.5, no, sorry, 11.25 came out, and it said that this was one of the fixes in the release notes. Right. And I hadn't actually seen the problem before that, and then it started happening to me. So that was stupid, but I assume it's got something to do with the upcoming iMessages in the cloud, and um, although apparently it is happening on the 11.3 beta as well, so... I'm not convinced, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's some huge behind-the-scenes iMessage work happening um, just to keep uh, just to get iMessage in the cloud released at some point in the in the year. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I saw some stuff that says that we should be expecting 11.3. Is that still the consensus? I think it For- got removed again. Did it, or was that AirPlay Two? That was AirPlay Two. Man, why did they remove that? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to AirPlay 2. More than iMessage yeah, in the cloud. Too. Same, same. So, I could definitely segue into HomePod talk right now, but we'll avoid that, hey? For maybe a bit later. <laughs> Alright, as long as we talk about it later, because I totally missed out on getting to talk about it uh, before. <laughs> so. I mean, yeah, go for it, man. It's fun. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, I, I, besides how great it is, I don't know. I don't have a lot to say about it, honestly. It's like... I don't use it for much besides how great it is. <laughs> well, it's like I just everything yeah, about it. Framing. Well, I don't take advantage of many of the smart features. I just use it for music mostly, and for that, it's you know one of the best yeah. speakers in the price range you can get. Yeah, so that, then then you're really gonna like it. So I have uh, quite a few Alexa devices around my house that I use those for most of my assistant needs, and then my HomePod actually lives in my bedroom, and I just use that for music. So, yeah, I had a, the Google Home Mini in the kitchen, but basically, I, well, I sold that and I just have the HomePod now. So it's the only smart device I've got in the house. You sold your Google Home Mini? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. I saw I saw you had made a, a post um, right when we received the HomePods, James. That yours had like a stain on it. Yeah. So I I ordered one to be shipped and then I went into the Apple store and picked one up one black and one white Mm -hmm. Um, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to pick one up that morning so well when I originally um, placed the pre-order but yeah when I took the white one out of the box which is the one I picked up from the Apple store uh, firstly it had a stain on it like it rubbed against uh, some black rubber maybe it rubbed against another home but I don't know and then (laughs) also the like the fabric mesh it was kind of rippled in places as well oh really Um, yeah I was already going and already decided to keep the black one though, so I wasn't too fussed, but I did make a post about it, and then I took it back to Apple the next week. Yes, as far as I can tell, you're the only person I've seen so far that's had an experience like that. Same. Yeah, true. I didn't see any posts about it either. Now the big, now the big uh, headache is apparently HomePods scuffing up tables or wear, wearing the finish off of tables. Yeah, the. Uh, rubber or silicon noise absorbing foot absorbs wood oils or pr- probably any oils really but if it's on a, an oiled wooden table it'll soak up um, the oil and leave a little ring there right i don't think it's gonna leave any permanent damage though but certainly annoyed some people yeah yeah it hasn't been a big issue for me but and it looks like they're not the only ones i saw when this uh, issue first arose people we're reporting similar issues with like the Sonos speakers and things like that. Just anything with a rubber foot basically sitting on uh, polished wood. So I don't. I think yeah, I you've think... got to put your HomePod on a stack of books like any sane person. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I saw some people take the the protective plastic layer off the top that was like covering the touchscreen and then putting it uh, on the foot instead. <laughs> Genius. Which I'm pretty sure negates the wow, negates the purpose of the true. foot, but. Just stack it on the piles of money you guys have. The piles of money. <laughs> my, my pile of money's gone. I spent it on a HomePod. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's true. So, hmm. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know how much, 
how much more I have to say about the actual, the iMessage issue. The way I read it on Reddit, people make it sound like this is a, a huge issue, and maybe it is for some people, but it's not something that I've had any experience to comment on. Yeah, either that or all my conversations can just be out of order and it's fine. <laughs> I just don't know it. <laughs> yeah, I don't go back and reread conversations. That could be happening so as well. Maybe it is happening. Right. <laughs> but. Um, was maybe the... Uh, did you guys hear about Apple's revised... Um, kind of, I'm not sure if you'd call it a revised release schedule or what, um, but they're, they're kind of toning back the pace at which they release features or at which they commit to releasing features. So this sort of thing will hopefully become a thing of the past, although you, know, you can't really ever say that. Like software bugs are always going to exist no matter what. But if they tone back um, yeah, the pace at which they do things, um, such things like pulling AirPlay out of the beta, AirPlay 2 out of the betas and moving it to the next release or um, there was a rumor of a completely revised home screen, which is apparently coming this year but will actually be coming next yeah, year that's sad i've been waiting a while for that yeah i'm i'm ready for a ui update yeah. as well since what mm. ios 7 was the last one and that was in yeah. 2013 is that when ios 7 came out it was a while ago yeah but either way i uh can definitely appreciate them slowing down the yeah i mean i, I got mixed opinions about it like i totally think that's cool but you know like it's always amazing and nice to just like jump into a new update like the ones that come around summer or fall if you don't get the betas um because it's almost as nice as getting a new phone some people not but like for a lot of people getting an update like like that's big and adds lots of stuff it's just fun to do yeah i totally and agree without that it just not not be as nice well oh, there was a time and it wasn't that long ago that you know apple was synonymous with things just working and not having bugs or viruses or, you know, glitchy betas. That just wasn't what Apple was. And that kind of feels like what they're becoming. And so I definitely don't mind taking a step back and going back to focusing on stability. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand it too, just from coming from like my position, you know, just even a software company in general. You just, after so many, you know, years of just putting out new features, you're just piling on the tech debt of, of backlog of bugs that just are kind of like, well, you know, it works. It's not great, but it still works. So you kind of just push along and then it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more of a problem until you end up with the iOS 11 release and everything comes back and hits you right in the face. So I think it's good. Good for them to do it. And I think a lot of other companies should. Maybe we need like a next step. Um, uh, <laughs> what am I going to say? Um, released for iOS, like just cut it out completely, buy a competitor, <laughs> and make that the new iOS. Yeah, <laughs> we could call it iOS 10. Oh, wait, no, that's taken. <laughs> it's pretty. Uh, speaking of next step uh, and iOS, it's amazing how much next step still influences iOS. Uh, and they're actually, I mean, Apple's starting to kind of do away with it with Swift 3. Uh, if you do any app development at all, a lot of the like default APIs that you reference from running an app is something like, like if you need a timer, you'd, you'd create an NS timer object. And NS is actually referencing next step from, you know, 20 years ago. Um, and they're starting to remove that in the newest version of Swift and getting rid of the, all the NS references. But uh, it's kind of nostalgic to be working on an app and still seeing Next Step everywhere. Yeah, Swift is slowly getting rid of it, but if you're still coding in Objective-C, NS is just prefacing pretty much everything, isn't it? Yeah, it seems like it. Mm -hmm. So, Not that I'd ever choose to use Objective-C over Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's push on to the next topic, which is uh, by a guy with an ex or a person with an excellent username, which is Wow Bob Wow, <laughs> who um, who posts took a lot of focus and effort, but I filled my Apple Watch rings for one year without a single missed day. So that's all three rings: his twelve hours of standing a day, thirty minutes of exercise, which is an elevated heart rate, and whatever his um, calorie or kilojoule burning move ring goal was. Yeah, I'd like to know. Which that. It, you'd like to know what his goal was? What? Yeah, what it was. It was 650 calories, which I think translates into maybe 1,800 yeah. kilojoules. Yeah. Which is a lot of movement that, and a lot yeah, of that's, exercise. That's a lot. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, I mean, when I first got my Apple Watch, I definitely felt some motivation to fill the rings. But 
at this point, after three years or so, I've started. Yeah, I've started to just kind of ignore it, which I feel bad about. Yeah, I should probably focus more on those rings again. But uh, <laughs> I feel like a lot of people seem to be really motivated by these rings on the Apple Watch, um, and like have turned their whole lives around. I've seen a lot of posts like I've lost a hundred pounds thanks to the Apple Watch, and that's awesome that it works for them. And uh, I, I wish it actually motivated me that much. Same. Um, four people that I know, or four people who are close to me, all have Apple Watches, and yeah, the the whole like comparing rings and completing achievements and talking about achievements is actually a pretty common occurrence. So I would say that yes, they do motivate me and my friends and family. Um, although they are buggy as hell, the achievements, especially the special ones, like the monthly ones. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen, but you can get like, well, say at the start of February, you get your February challenge, and then like two yeah. seconds later, it'll be completed. <laughs> oh. If you browse the Apple Watch subreddit, you'll see that these are like the, the buggiest implement, the most buggy, buggily, <laughs> buggily implemented features. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word. Um, well, I think maybe my problem is also then I don't really know anyone else that owns an Apple Watch, so I don't get to do the competitive features at all with other people. So that can make a huge difference. Why don't you add me? There we go. Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right. All right. We should all add it. And David, you need to get yours back out of the drawer and start wearing it again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> yeah, I do. I really do. I don't think it's still going to motivate me anymore. I also weigh like 115 pounds. I'm 28 years old. So oh, man. I don't need to move. Oh, wow. My, my calorie goal should be negative and just to sit and eat more. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to attempt to do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah add me you can feel good about yourself because you'll always beat me <laughs> i can always beat a, a watch sitting in a drawer yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah i'll add you guys it'll be fun i'll be up and working out while james is asleep <laughs> exactly. so so i think the way it'll work that i'll be setting your target for the day because i'll be going first and then you'll have to try and match me oh right. yeah okay that actually might even be even more motivating <laughs> so i had a problem with this activity sharing feature, when it first came out a couple years ago, uh, like at the time I was dating someone that had an Apple Watch, and for the entire time that I dated her, I had no way to like get my fitness sharing to work. Every time we'd try it, it'd glitch out on both our ends and wouldn't let us accept our requests. So hopefully that's fixed by now. Yeah, I can't say I've ever had a problem with it, so maybe it was just uh, an early days bug. But uh, it looks like you just accepted me then, so... Yeah, it looks like I'm, I've that's, got you added, so... <laughs> Cool. I don't know what my calorie goal even is anymore. Higher than yours, ha. Huh? I I never kept beating mine, so I just <laughs> turned mine down and down and down. Like for the first like I guess month, I was doing really well, and then I moved it up like once, and it's like yeah. I could never do it again. Like I did it like once every month, probably. I got all the rings, and then then I just moved it really far down, and now I don't even remember what I at first had it at. So I don't nice. know, I forgot what it's at now though. I think around six hundred calories is like the default. I was on. A massive streak last year of feeling in my rings um because you know if you feel your move ring you start a move streak i was up to 260 or maybe close to 300 days wow but really really annoyingly i mean that took a bit of work not a lot but you know sometimes before going to bed i had to pace through the house just to get the last 50 kilojoules oh, yeah, I've done that which a few times. sounds ridiculous it is ridiculous but anyway, I flew from um, the States to Japan, and with the time zone change, it wrecked me. There was no way I could actually do it, um, because it uh, crossing the dateline puts you back a day or forward a day or whatever it is, and there's no way to go back in time and get yesterday's ring. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a lot of posts, especially recently, people saying that Apple should give people like a sick day a month or something, so that it doesn't mess up their uh, streaks. And the, the poster, Wow Bow Wow. I think he mentioned that um, he was sick one day and he was like pacing out front of the toilet to complete his ring. Yeah, <laughs> sick as a dog. <laughs> that's determination right there. Yeah, yeah man, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Anyway, let's, let's push on. Does anyone want to talk about uh, the S9? Because apparently early benchmarks show that the Samsung Galaxy S9 is well behind the iPhone 10 in processor performance. I think that's um, it's always been that way. Not to throw yeah. shade or anything, but... I mean, especially... Is this is this the uh, American or international model of the S9 with the yeah, Exynos processor? Yeah, because they're different, huh? Yeah. And to help, um, jump on... Uh, what's the word? To heap on top of that, the... Article which actually says this says that the S9 that he was using didn't even perform the S8, so he thinks there was something wrong with the phone. So I really, really debated whether we should put this in the um, show today, 
but I thought we could just use it to talk about Samsung or something like that. So sure, um, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of merit in the article itself. Um, although I do believe that the iPhone processors um, are probably a year or maybe even two years ahead um, of where the Samsung processors are up to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, as far as the S9 goes, I've heard a lot of good things. It sounds like. Uh... They've got the highest rated camera now and even the highest rated display. So they've got some good things going for them. Even the processor is not quite as fast. Well, the yeah, the camera apertures, that, that that's incredible. And this ultra or whatever they call it, slow-mo, like 960 frames per second, I think. Like, that's nuts. Have you actually seen the video that comes out of that, though? Because it's, it's not that nice. It's 720. It's 720. It is 720, and... though. And you can record for 0.2 of a second. Yeah, it's 0.2 second, and it turns it into like six seconds. But it has something that that knows, like, um, it it'll detect like really fast motion. And they said it um, it works really well. Um, and I was looking, and I guess people are saying the same thing. So this is a feature that's been out for a little while as well. On oh man, was it some Nokia? handsets had ultra slow-mo that also recorded like half a second um but those can do 1080p so i'm kind of disappointed samsung couldn't even match that oh wow i didn't know that yeah it's kind of a niche phone i off the top of my head i can't remember what it's called uh i can look it up real quick but uh oh yeah this isn't this isn't exactly yeah, a new it feature seems like a niche feature so okay. and then samsung's displays this new oled and the s9 being better than the 10 I mean that's not really surprising since well Apple... Samsung kind of Samsung kind of did the they they manufactured the uh, iPhone 10 screen and supplied them to for Apple. Right. Yeah, that's why I'm saying it's not surprising that, that a newer Samsung display is going to be better than that and I've heard that Samsung leveraged a lot of the money that Apple put into calibration and then implemented it in their S9 as well. So but yeah, either way competition's good, pushes everyone forward. So I don't have an issue with yeah, that at all exactly. coming from the guy who said android people aren't real people <laughs> that's wild. what thank that's you big of you a month later up. oh man <laughs> <laughs> okay just to remind everyone here i, right? I just looked this up not not to change the subject but uh it, it wasn't a nokia it's a <laughs> you're totally changing the subject <laughs> uh the phone that also has the super slow-mo at 1080 is the sony uh xz2 uh, and also the original, I believe XZ1 had slow mo, but that was at seven seven twenty, and this new one's at ten eighty. Uh, wait, it, what were the frames per second? So it was like a nine hundred sixty, the same as the S nine. Um, I look up the exact specs here, but yeah, I believe it's about the same. Okay. I'm not gonna be impressed until I can replicate the slow mo guys YouTube channel. All right, uh, <laughs> that's gonna be an expensive <laughs> <K> frames. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of not surprised that Sony has this, though, because they're also a camera company, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, 960 frames per second. All right. So, That's pretty cool. Yeah. When did the phone come out? Uh, the XZ2 is brand new. Um, the other one came out a little over a year ago, I believe, but I'm not sure exactly. Okay. So so back to the S9 for a sec. Um, sure. There, there wasn't a whole lot that was new with it, really. The camera was the biggest improvement, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it changes the aperture. It was from one point something to two point something and it's a physical change which is cool you can actually see just like on um, like an slr camera you can see the little aperture moving around it's pretty nice and i believe they've also put some dram in the camera module itself which i'd never heard of oh, anything yeah. anyone doing yeah, that, that, they did that yeah too. um it's got the two cameras on the plus size phone so um telephoto and standard and then it's also got the what do they call it? A R emoji, which yeah. to me, A-R-emoji I'm not sure if you saw R-emoji any. And yeah, R emoji. Ar- emoji. <laughs> it's so creepy though. It yeah, makes it like is a creepy. It, yeah, me or avatar or whatever you want yeah, to call it. I honestly, I don't know. They they look kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, at least they're trying a little bit to differentiate themselves from an emoji, but they they definitely didn't do it right. <laughs> <laughs> but. And besides the camera, I think it it got a another speaker on the top so it's a stereo speaker now um the screen is even more infinity whatever that means uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 so yeah i've seen i've seen some comments uh on like android forums people are saying like see apple fans this is how you make an edge edge display without a notch but yeah it was hilarious to watch the keynote and watch them mock apple like every year it's always something 
And this year they didn't mention the headphone jack. They have like every year since they got rid of it. And I think next year they're going to remove it because they didn't mention it. And so maybe they're trying to make it not seem like a whole big deal. I think Samsung's basically the only big company still hanging on to it, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Every year there's a rumor. And then, so it feels like they're like contemplating it. Like they're, they, they're going to do it. And they're like, you know what? Never mind. And so usually they always make this whole big deal about it. But this year, the way they didn't mention it or do anything. So I'm, I'm thinking that maybe next year is the year because they're trying to make it seem like, like kind of change change their stance almost yeah can't take a, a keynote and mock somebody for removing the uh the headphone jack and then a year later remove it yourself yeah so. take a year off yeah, yeah. I, could see that. I mean google did that with the pixel right. phone so yeah they did yeah but google is google so i was gonna say maybe they didn't mention it because they're embarrassed that they still haven't worked out how to centrally align the headphone jack um what? usb-c and speaker grill <laughs> <laughs> i didn't wait I didn't know. I'm not that. serious, but yeah, they're not centrally aligned, and they never yeah. have been. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but there were they 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 mentioned the notch, and there was one other thing they did. Uh, oh, the fingerprint sensor. They said, uh, they said something like, uh, "We we heard your um, your feedback, so we moved the placement of the fingerprint sensor and didn't remove it." Yeah, so it's underneath the camera now instead of next to it, which. Some um, commenters online said was a better spot to put it and a more natural spot for your finger to rest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's that's fine. I don't I don't think that fingerprint readers can get better at the same pace that Face ID can get better, and eventually everyone's going to drop it and support facial recognition just because it's so much more advanced. And yeah, if you get a wide angle like a wide angle lens on facial recognition and you can recognize your face from sitting on a desk or something that basically eliminates the one case where i feel like a fingerprint sensor might be better and samsung doesn't even have that since the fingerprint readers on the back yeah exactly so um, i've always been debating with myself whether i like touch id or face id better and i haven't really decided although i have noticed recently that um with pre-iphone 10 when it came to apple paying you know, Apple Pay, you don't really have it in the US, but <laughs> we have it everywhere here. <laughs> Sorry, that's just a jab and our next topic. But anyway, um, pre iPhone 10, I would nearly always pay with my phone instead of my watch just because it was actually faster to do it with my phone. But since Face ID has come out, I think I've actually moved to doing it on my watch because it's faster on the watch. So um, say what you will about Face ID. I think Touch ID at the moment is still a superior system, just based on my usage habits. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, I definitely defaulted to using my watch whenever I could, as soon as I got it. I don't think anything to do with Face ID versus Touch ID. It's just whether or not I want to pull my phone out of my pocket. But I could definitely see it being faster to use your fingerprint. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely faster. Because I've, I've used it because, again, my watch stays in a drawer, so... Uh... But yeah, especially because you had you could just hold it next to the reader and then put your thumb on there. With this, I feel like I have to put my phone next to the reader because I don't have the double tap on the, the power button to activate it because then the lock is slow. Um, but if you get it close to the NFC chip, it automatically pulls up Apple Pay and then you double tap and then it asks for Face ID, which I then have to bring the phone back up to my face <laughs> fast enough for it to read it and then back down so it knows that I didn't actually want to not pay. Um, so yeah, it, it's kind of a pain, but it works. Did you say you turned off double tap of the power button to activate apple pay yeah right okay i haven't heard of that before i didn't actually know it was possible yeah 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 you, you, you turn it off because again have you ever noticed like if you try to lock your your iphone and you still have that on you, you press the power button and then it takes a little second for it actually to to lock the phone um and that's because it's waiting for that second tap well i didn't notice until now thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah no problem <laughs> And you don't really need it because as soon as you put it next to the NFC reader, it automatically pulls up Apple Pay anyway, so you don't have to, you know, double tap. Right. You can just put it next to it. So Yeah, yeah but then the face ID is kind of too far away at most NFC readers to get mm. your face. So, yeah, I can see what right. the process yeah. is. It's a bit of like back and forth, back and forth. Huh. Yeah, or if you just want to put your face, you know, down towards the reader. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> Creep some guy people out. Over. They're like, what right. is he doing? <laughs> so to segue into the next topic, I'll just read the title because we're already mostly on the topic, but yeah. you can pay for transit yeah. with Apple Pay in Moscow or Moscow, however you pronounce that. Moscow. Saint, yeah? I think, yeah. Did the translation of that change at some point? Because I'm pretty sure it used to be Moscow. It's probably just a regional thing. <laughs> uh, I think it depends on where you're from, yeah. honestly. All right. 
Yeah. I think they I think, say it Moscow here. In the US. I, I think we say Moscow as Americans, and the correct is Moscow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. All right. I'm going to stick with Moscow and Saint Petersburg. Um, sorry, I'll start again. You can pay with transit with Apple Pay in Moscow, St. Petersburg, but not in New York, Boston, or Washington, D.C. Please get it together, American cities. There's some pretty interesting, like, I don't, know, I don't know about transit. There's not really a lot of mass transit where I live. But as far as, like, retail stores go, um, big companies like Walmart are really pushing against Apple Pay and NFC payments as general. And they're, like, trying to get people to adopt QR code scanning from within their own app to pay for things what? uh oh yeah Ugh. it's called walmart pay <laughs> but any Gross. anyway it uh there's actually like a conglomerate of companies that are i don't know if it's the right word but a group of companies that are like trying to ban not not ban it but not allow nfc payments in their stores instead supporting these qr code payments because it's easier to track customers that way um, and I'm sure this extends to other other industries as well. I'm just familiar with retail. That sucks. Yeah. Like, why? They're just trying to get you to come into their app and stick yeah. around and buy more things. Yeah, and then if you use their app to pay for it, they can see who bought it and they can recommend. It's just for tracking stuff, I think. Yeah, I think they also they there was they had a competitor that they were involved with for a while when Apple Pay first came out that they were already working with, so they didn't jump on board immediately. Um, I can't remember the name Currency. right now, but uh, maybe um, I have to look it up. But I think that fell off, and so they kind of just went to the QR thing, and they're still trying to get against Apple. Yeah, um, yeah they just need to uh, like accept NFC. I mean, all businesses across the U.S. need to accept NFC. Basically, right now, all I can use it on is like vending machines and McDonald's. So the situation here is that NFC is basically accepted at ninety nine percent of places where you would want to pay for anything. Um, but the problem is actually with the banks because some of the biggest banks are um, fighting against Apple to have more access to um, what the NFC chip actually does when you tap it on a payment system. Instead of invoking Apple Pay, it, they would prefer it to invoke one of their own apps or payment systems. Oh. So that's been an ongoing thing for a couple of years. So they want their own thing to, to pay when the thing is used? The yeah, Apple instead chip. of Apple Pay, they want their own system to be invoked. Wow, okay. Hmm. So, like, in Australia, how long have you guys had uh, chip and pin on just standard credit cards? I would say that, um, like, signatures made way for pin numbers probably maybe maybe over 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And then contactless has slowly been proliferating um, for the past... Five years. They're just rough guesses from my memory. Uh, but not 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 necessarily contactless, but like the chips built into the, the cards where you insert the card instead of swiping them. Oh, yeah, that's probably been 10 years then, I'd say. Okay. Yeah, because that's, that's, I think, just last year it finally became like co- completely adopted here in the U.S. So we're definitely way far behind as far as payment methods go. Yeah, actually, last year when I was in the U.S., there are a couple of fuel stations I went to where they didn't accept the chip still. So I used the magnetic swipe on my Australian bank card. Uh-huh. And every time I did that, my card would be locked by my Australian bank for fraud. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it, would, it would trigger their system every time it happened. It was a massive hassle. So then I, I had to stop going to um, anywhere that wouldn't take a chip because, yeah, it would oh be locked gosh. in. Yeah, I guess as far as pay at the pump goes, we still have magnetic readers you actually have to go into the gas station if you want to use your chip to pay for things yeah so yeah we're we're pretty far behind as far as secure payment methods go so one thing i was just thinking about um the post which is specifically about transit systems is that when you're using say apple pay to swipe on are you just paying for a single fare like how does it know where you're getting off because the way it works in my home city is that we've got like an nfc card not Visa, MasterCard, Apple Pay or anything like that, just the transport system's own card. You tap on when you get on, and then you tap off wherever you get off, and it, it works out the distance between the two and then charges you the appropriate amount. But I assume with Apple Pay, it's just going to charge you a single fare. Do you guys have any idea? Well, like, there's again, there's not really any mass transit where I'm from, but I know that for, for a while, there was the option to have, like, your transit card stored in your wallet and then use NFC to, like use the transit card so maybe they're calling that apple pay but 
Yeah, curious. I don't think the transit card stored in the wallet would count as Apple Pay myself, but I yeah. could be wrong. Or they could actually be going up to like a ticket window and buying a ticket every time and paying with, uh, you know, their phone or watch. <laughs> Does that count as contactless payment system? I Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, Christian, yeah. you... Um, you made a nice video about your visit to Apple Park. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was nice. Can you tell us about it? Uh, well, it's funny. I think this article came out when I was there, <laughs> and I remember reading about it, and I looked over the glass, and I was like, yep. Can you give us the title of the article? <laughs> uh, so it says, the interior of Apple Park glass is so clear, distracted employees are walking into it. <laughs> so they also apparently tried to put... <laughs> sticky notes on the the glass to try and get the people to see but they apparently like didn't let them do it so they had to take it down because it obstructs the design or something like that i don't know (laughs) but i thought it was hilarious like what like there was a few like every like few minutes probably 10 20 minutes um when we were at the visitor center that there was like two people or sometimes one person they would just probably come around and when they noticed something they were constantly just wiping down the windows at the visitors wow it, it was weird gotta set the traps man <laughs> yeah i wonder if I'm they're just... there just because it's new or if they're like they're always there now just their job well, is i mean you know how App- apple is with their design and everything and i mean if you like have a big like building that's made of like 90 percent glass or like i think just the visitor center they have like literally just the roof is not glass um at least on the outside and so if you have that like I think it would start to just look really bad after a long while of, I mean, even just like for the short time it's been open, if they weren't doing what they do now, I think it would probably be a big mess and would look pretty bad. There'd be fingerprints and all kinds of things on it. So is the visitor center also an Apple store or? What is yeah, it is. Describe it? It, it's uh yeah. So they've got the visitor center um has, so it has a normal Apple store that's kind of like really big and it's got a giant like screen that just, shows like like uh just a bunch of apple products i think you could probably see a little bit in my video of it i think i had a clip of the home pod and the the iphone my favorite part in it yeah yeah he told me um (laughs) and uh, and it's like uh what else they've i think there was one thing they have their um kind of newer idea the genius grove i think is what they called it it's not a genius bar but it's basically like an area where they've got a bunch of spots on the ground well not on the ground but like they're like cubes and other things that you can just go and meet uh have your genius appointments there kind of weird um and then they've also got cafe max which don't expect a lot from like they've got like coffee hot chocolate and some italian hot chocolate i can't remember the name but it was super good um And that's basically it. And then they've got like almonds and cashews for like four bucks each that are like legit, like the tiniest bags ever. So it, it, and then you can, that you can also eat in there and then you can also eat up on the roof, which is pretty nuts. Is that on the roof? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That was pretty cool. But it was like freezing. So we'd stay up there for like 10 minutes and then left. And then there's also like this one giant room. It's a lot bigger than you would expect for what it's for, but it's, basically just a model of the entire campus and you get to go and they'll give you an ipad and you can go and if you put it's they have like some app or whatever you put the ipad kind of over it um into view and the camera will kind of like turn it in because it's made of entirely out of i don't know what it was i guess it's aluminum because they use that for everything and it's all like silver aluminum apparently weighs like a few tons or something and you take the ipad interview in front of it and it'll kind of turn into the real thing and you can like tap parts of it and like it can you can take the roof off of the park and look on the inside and you can look over at the steve jobs theater and see how the whole thing is basically underground and it's really cool whereabouts is the visitor center in relation to the spaceship the ring uh, right across the street, like, so, I don't know, probably 10, 20 steps from the corner where the visitor center sits is where they, uh, was like one of the gates where I'm guessing if you work there, you got to go and check in there or something and they'll let you in. So fairly close. Nice. Mm-hmm. I was, uh, I was just thinking after you published the video, I should have, uh, should have sent you some money and asked you to 
to send me some of the the special Apple merchandise you can only get at the actual campus. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm actually wearing the shirt right now. I completely didn't realize that, but yeah, oh, really? I got the shirt. But yeah, I've always wanted to it. get some of that swag, but I've never made it out to their actual campus. So I just want some of those four dollar almonds. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. If I could show you how small the bag was for four bucks, I could. I don't know what, like... Courage. I don't know, but it was very small. <laughs> Courage. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, just back on the topic. I would have thought it'd be illegal to have these massive panes of glass without some sort of marking on them at eye level to show yeah. that there's glass there. Um, at least here um, in Australia, if you've got, like, a large sliding door or anything that... um is a big pane of glass that someone could walk through. <laughs> it's uh, illegal to not have some marking on there. Huh. Yeah, it's definitely not a law here. But, uh, yep. And I'm sure even if it was a law, Apple would pay a bunch of money to try to get around it to have the cleanest looking building possible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> Actually, I should go check out the Apple store in um, the city here and see because the whole front of that is big panes of glass. Yeah, I wonder if they've worked around the law. Yeah, but I don't know if they probably make as much as an effort for that for like a store. But I mean, they might. But I've I've seen uh like almost like every Apple store has like a glass front. Doesn't necessarily go all the way around. A few of them, I think, do are a little bit less or more than that. But I honestly, don't think I noticed really as much as I did um there. But you didn't actually see anyone walk into the glass. Yeah, did you? definitely no. But. When I looked up and looked at it, I was like, yeah, someone could definitely walk into that. So yeah, I know like some of the stores like New York and Chicago definitely have like all glass all the way around without any kind of indications. I just looked at a, an article about them getting a redesigned one in Australia and the, the glass panes in the front have a black border around them, which I do. They really? Uh, yeah, I don't oh, think they have those here. I'd like to see so. what that looks like. Which yeah. store is that? Uh, Melbourne. Oh, is yep. the Flinders Square store? Uh, possibly. I didn't read the article, but here I'll link it in our uh, chat. Yeah, sure. Man, there's a lot of controversy about this store because they're knocking down, um, I guess you might call it like a, a loved building, and they're putting up this thing, which seriously, it looks like um, something out of uh, like the Ming Dynasty in China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at a picture it's of it right now. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's something else. And it's right in a real hot spot of Melbourne. Huh. Like right at the central train station, right at one of the main squares. So it's like a historic and thing or something? I don't think the building that they're knocking down is anything historic, but it's more that what they're putting up is is something... Um, I don't think this is the one, actually, that you sent the link to. What is this? Uh, this is the Chadstone store. I, I, I've got to send you a link. Flinders okay. to Apple. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Though. So you can have Melbourne a look at what it looks one. like. Yeah, send send the link. And I'll try and remember to put these in the show notes as well. Yeah, this is not although I much uh, I rarely remember to do that. Oh yeah, I've, these black borders are interesting as well. That's definitely not something we you have. Found in a the picture. US. Uh, the, it was yeah, definitely the here. So this is our store, the redesigned one here in uh, North Carolina. I just linked that. But yeah, you, you can see how that front glass. There's absolutely no. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no panes on it. So. All right, I've just sent the Flinders Square. In Melbourne, for <laughs> setting links of these now. Yeah, it's it's pretty. Uh, <laughs> this is great. Audio. Right, really interesting for <laughs> yeah, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like what? What are they? Doing? <laughs> yeah, that's definitely. Uh, um, it doesn't really remind me of other Apple Store designs very much. Kind yeah. of uh, a unique idea, unique take. See, I have like one Apple Store close to me, uh, but it's in a mall, like on the inside, and it's not as big as really any of the other ones at all so i don't know if at all or how they're gonna redesign it i think if they do anything they're probably gonna move it somewhere yeah that's what they did it that's what they did <clears> at ours <throat> they just shut down the other one well actually they kept it open and then they just bought out a new space and then built it oh, really? and then closed so one and then two. opened the other yeah oh. well the other one's not there anymore but yeah they kept it open while they were renovating the new okay. space that they leased out so yeah well hopefully they do that to mine because I really like their whole new idea of the redesign. Yeah, the stores look great. Yeah. Well, while we're sharing, this one is uh, one, one of the ones <laughs> in my my hometown. And it, it just oh, got yes. redesigned. And it actually does have the black bars on huh. the windows now. The, so have maybe, you been over there? Uh, not since the redesign. So, yeah, I wonder uh, if... yeah. I just found a photo of my I just found a photo of my local Apple store and it's an old photo because there's like a mobile me cloud in the window <laughs> but it does have a strip of frosted glass about a meter and a half off the ground across the whole front of the store. Oh really? So yeah. And it doesn't look bad either so maybe they could do this at um, the visitor center. 
<laughs> or every, everywhere else at Apple yeah. Park. <laughs> <laughs> that, that has huge glass panes. I'm just picturing people walking around with like laptops and coffee in their hand and just constantly running into walls. So it just cracks me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not completely sure how this how this actually happens. Like, I can understand being distracted, but so distracted you walk into glass seems odd to me. Unless I mean, it's you work interior at Apple, glass. So what do you expect? You probably <laughs> on your iPhone or doing something. I mean. Like if there's a can wall, we just say, can we just I say this top it? comment of this of this post? What I'm just gonna it? pause. The, the top comment of the post on Reddit is probably the same employees working on software. <laughs> really? Are the same employees walking into the glass? Yes, that is the top comment on the post on Reddit. At least iOS 11 software. Uh, yep, that is so. I don't know. I, I just cringe at that sort of comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Hmm. Uh, that actually makes me think of something else. I um added another Apple-related podcast to my list of podcasts that I listened to um, a few weeks ago. And then at some point in the last fortnight, I realized that I'd listened to like a couple of hours straight of people just whinging about Apple. And I thought, something's going to change. I've got to just delete any podcast that is just a whinge about Apple because I need some sort of variety. And I hope our podcast doesn't come across as any sort of whinge and we actually um, do inject a bit of positive positivity um, an actual real discussion into it. You know, I think we do because it, it ours is unique. Whereas, like, you know, we're not coming up with these random things that happened this week. You know, we're we're taking the most popular or not popular, but well, yeah, popular um, posts from the week. And so this is almost like a thing that we're not in charge of what's ha- going to happen on this week's podcast. It's it's, it's the viewers. Um, so I think it's nice in that sense. I'm pretty sure I can draw from from context clues here. But I just wanted to say I've never heard the word whinge before. Yeah, I haven't either. Yeah. I just looked it up. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Whinge. <laughs> I don't, yeah. That's you keep incredible. saying it like I'm supposed to remember what it is, but I still, I still have no idea, man. <laughs> never heard this word. Whinge, W-H-I-N-G-E. Oh. Yeah, kerplunkle, I get it. Right. Right. It says Australia, <laughs> New Zealand, UK slang, so. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, my mind is blown. I had no idea that, that was a slang word. To me, that's just a regular word. Like, if I was writing an essay, I would put whinge in there. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's pretty... I can add that to my uh, to my vocabulary, and we'll, we'll spread the word whinge around the U.S. as well, then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do it. It's such a good word. Let's start it. Let's make Reddit whinge. <laughs> I don't think that's the right use. <laughs> yeah. You mean, like r slash whinge is that a thing <laughs> oh you no, must be invited I mean, to join this community oh it's no. a private community no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make that that'll be like our hub so we'll we'll start the uh, what would we we'll, we're just a group and we'll start it and see how many people we can get into the u.s to start spreading the word i mean whinge. technically we have a lot of the country covered Right, David's on the east coast. I'm in the mm-hmm. center, and Christian, you're on the yeah, west on coast, the right? West. Yeah. yeah. So we can really make this happen. Yep. <laughs> All right. Next time I visit the states, I'm expecting to hear at least a couple of people use the word. <laughs> so you, you've got a few years. Yeah. All right, Otherwise, okay. we're fired. <laughs> That's right. Otherwise, in a few years, you're off the podcast. All right. <laughs> like, make a point to say it once a day or something. Yeah. All right. But. Or at least in the next show or next couple of shows. That'd be great. I'd really appreciate that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm gonna, I, I'm I know you're gonna... already thinking of title names. Oh, oh yeah. No, yeah. don't. Yep, there it is. We're going to get comments on the the posts this week. Oh, yeah? <laughs> We're going to be saying whinge and other stupid stuff about that. <laughs> I'm going to Google a bunch of Australian slang and, and be ready for the next, the next podcast. Oh, no. <laughs> and James is going to google american slang wait what is american slang i saw a good video yesterday it had jennifer lawrence and some australian actor and it was specifically australian versus kentucky slang which was pretty funny there was definitely some slang in there i had no idea huh james you have to you have to come back with american slang and we'll come back with australian slang and then what like a quiz or something okay so apparently a buck is an american slang so like a, a dollar yeah, if you said a buck in Australia, people would know what you're talking about, but they might cringe that you're yeah. being a little too American. <laughs> is is that a bad thing in Australia to be too American? 
Yeah, actually, there is a little bit of that culture in that an Australian person that's, um, oh, I don't know how to put this. <laughs> yeah, that's adopted too many American like um, characteristics or things might might be cringed at, might be looked upon negatively. Yeah, so here's two that I'm not surprised. There's for real and hyped. Those are would, I'm not surprised by those. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this out. Would would an Australian that knows or uses too much American slang be a bogan? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> this is an uncultured person in Australia. So. <laughs> yeah, so a bogan is basically what you'd call a redneck, I think. Ah, okay. Okay. I mean, so that... they're driving a car with a loud muffler, probably the windows down and loud music and um, yeah. wearing like a ripped jeans and a flannelette t-shirt. Yeah. You just described huh. me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh, this is awkward. Gosh. Yeah. Oh, so man. that's the show for today. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. No, you can, you can definitely be... Um, a hipster wearing those exact clothes and the exact activity <laughs> I described. It's all about how you pull it off. Exactly. Uh-huh. Maybe it's about what car you're driving. Like, if you're in a Honda, then there's no way you're a Bogan. <laughs> right. Oh, um, man. All right. So, next week, first topic will be slang. All right. And, um, yeah, that'll do for the week. Sounds good. I am James VDM on Reddit and Twitter. I'm Jelly Woot. On Reddit and Twitter. I'm the Serial Vapist on Reddit and Sparks the Dave on Twitter. I'm Lord Mythic Class on Reddit and Del McClan 2 on Twitter. All right. And as mentioned at the start, we have a Patreon. So if anyone feels the um, need to, or well, not the need, if anyone wants to support us, it'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, yeah, cool. Thanks for joining. Perfect. Thanks. All right. See you guys. See ya.